The play starts off in the middle of a conversation between two noblemen, Kent and Gloucester. In the division of the kingdom, it appears not which of the dukes he values most. They're talking about the king's family. Lately, King Lear has divided his kingdom so evenly between his family that it's hard to tell who he likes more. The king has three daughters. His first daughter, Goneril, is married to Albany. His second daughter, Regan, is married to Cornwall. King Lear also has another daughter, Cordelia, his youngest and favorite daughter who isn't married yet. Edmund is also in the room with Kent and Gloucester. Edmund is Gloucester's illegitimate son. Basically, Edmund's father, Gloucester, had sex with a woman who wasn't his wife and accidentally got that woman pregnant. The accidental baby is, well, Edmund. So in the play, Edmund is often referred to as a bastard, which is in reference to the fact that he's an illegitimate son. Now, it used to be embarrassing for Gloucester to have to admit to everyone that Edmund is actually his child, but he's done it so many times now that he's more or less used to it. In fact, when he's introducing Edmund to Kent, he even blurts out an inappropriate joke about Edmund's mother, saying, There was good sport in his making. Which is like the equivalent of saying, I might not like the fact that Edmund's like a proof of my inability to stay loyal to my own wife, but hey, sex with that other woman was just so hot. If you're thinking that's a little bit rash, I do agree with you. But check this out. He says all of these embarrassing things about Edmund to Kent while Edmund is still in the room and can hear everything. You can imagine how embarrassing that is for Edmund. Anyways, the next scene gives us an opportunity to see all of the major characters of the play. Let's take a look. King Lear arrives at the castle with his family and servants. He orders Gloucester to go and bring the King of France and the Duke of Burgundy, and begins to speak. Know that we have divided in three our kingdom, and tis our fast intent to shake all cares and business from our age, conferring them on young strengths, while we unburdened crawl to our death. He continues, saying that he will give land and inheritance to his daughters based on how much they say they love him. Goneril, our eldest born, speak first. Sir, I love you more than words can wield the matter. A love that makes breath poor and speech unable. Beyond all manner of so much, I love you. So Lear likes the sound of this and gives away a good third of his kingdom to Goneril and her husband, the Duke of Albany. Next up is Regan. My true heart, I find she names my very deed of love. Only she comes, she comes too short. I profess myself an enemy to all other joys and find I am alone felicitate in your dear highness's love. <laughs> nice, that's a classic move. She's basically saying, how much do I love you? Well, however much Goneril loves you, only more than that. Very nice. Okay, so Lear goes on to give another third of his kingdom to Regan. The last third is obviously supposed to go to Lear's favorite daughter, Cordelia. But no. First, Cordelia must tell him how much she loves him. So Cordelia speaks, but what she says is short and very surprising. Nothing, my lord. How? Nothing will come of nothing? Speak again! When given another chance, she defends her position by saying, Unhappy that I am, I cannot heave my heart into my mouth. I love your majesty according to my bond, no more, no less. Lear doesn't like the sound of this and warns her, Mend your speech a little, lest you may mar your fortunes. So Cordelia strikes right back at him and speaks her thoughts. She says that she loves her father as much as any daughter should but she refuses to say exactly how much and doesn't want to participate in this little game of quantifying love. You can really feel her reasoning when she asks Lear, how could my sisters possibly love you and only you when they have husbands to love as well? But goes thy heart with this? Aye, good my lord. So young and so untender. So young my lord and true. Let it be so. Thy truth then be thy dower. Full of rage, he lashes out at Cordelia, swearing by the sun, moon, and planets. Here I disclaim all my paternal care, propinquity and property of blood. But sir, his Kent, come not between the dragon and his wrath. 
Lear is blinded by his rage and gives nothing to Cordelia. He disowns his daughter right in front of everyone. It's a moment of shock for everyone in the room, but Lear moves right along. He removes his crown and gives it to Cornwall and Albany. By doing so, he's giving away all the things that come with being a king. Responsibilities, income, power, and authority. But he does have three conditions. Number one, he wants to keep 100 knights with him at all times as his entourage. Number two, he still wants to be called king. And number three, he wants to live at Goneril and Regan's palace one month at a time. So Lear goes on to give the portion of the land that was originally meant for Cordelia to Regan and Goneril. Now Kent has been listening in for a while, and he really thinks all of this is just a bad idea for Lear. So he intervenes. Royal Lear, whom I have ever honored as my king, loved as my father, as my master followed, as my great patron thought on in my prayers. The bow is bent and drawn, make from the shaft, let it fall rather, though the fork invade the region of my heart. Kent, on thy life, no more. My life I never held, but as a pawn to wage against thy enemies. Out of my sight. In a furious rage, Lear banishes Kent from the kingdom and says that if Kent isn't gone within five days, he'll be executed. So Kent leaves and Lear finishes up the business that he already started. So let's see, he's already divided up the kingdom in half for Goneril and Regan now. There's only one more thing to deal with. The Duke of Burgundy and the King of France are here because they've been competing over who gets to marry Cordelia. So again, in front of everyone, Lear makes it sound like Cordelia did something horrible and says that whoever wants to take her shouldn't expect any inheritance to come with her. Burgundy doesn't like the sound of that, so Burgundy backs down from marrying Cordelia. But the King of France thinks that Cordelia did a great job for standing up for what she thought was right. So the King of France immediately proposes to her and they get married right then and there. After Lear exits, Cordelia and the King of France also start to exit, and right before they do, Cordelia tells her sisters that time will reveal the truth about her sister's intentions. The scene closes off with Goneril and Regan discussing about how rash their father has been lately. Within just one event of a day, he gave away his entire kingdom to the two of them, banished his loyal servant Kent, and exiled the daughter that he loved the most for so long. They worry that their father's bad habits and old age might affect them adversely in the days to come.